Former Defence Minister Sir Gerald Howarth joins us. Uh, good morning, Sir Gerald. Uh, Rishi Sunak is under increasing scrutiny over support for Israel. Do you think that the pressure will have any effect? I don't think so, no. I think that uh, government is uh, clearly uh, assessing precisely what is going on in the region. Let's not forget uh, that uh, this conflict has come about uh, because of the utterly despicable brutality of Hamas. Uh, and an organization uh, which is uh, prescribed in the United Kingdom as a terrorist organization. It is still holding 130 Israeli hostages, ordinary civilian people. We don't know how many of them are still alive. Uh, they have been using uh, Palestinians ruthlessly as human shields uh, to protect themselves from uh, Israel's perfectly legitimate retaliation. So it is a very difficult situation uh, to, uh, to deal with. My personal view is that um, Israel made a fundamental mistake at the outset because their objective of seeking to eliminate Hamas, this uh, underground terrorist organization, which, as I say, has uh, um, used individuals as human shields uh, and built all these tunnels, including under hospitals and so on, that, that, that to eliminate them is, uh, is an impossible objective. And therefore, I think the policy has been flawed. I also feel that um, Israel, with a vast arsenal of precision weapons, uh, has not been using them in the precise fashion that I had, I suspect others uh, involved in defence issues had expected. Uh, the scenes look very much like saturation bombing rather than precision bombing, as whole areas of uh, uh, of Gaza have have been effectively flattened. So this is a very challenging time for Israel's allies, compounded, of course, in our case in the United Kingdom by the loss of these three uh, veterans. And I cannot understand why the Israelis took out not one, but three separate vehicles. Those missiles could have been deflected. And uh, it looks as though the targeters uh, did not take sufficient care to identify the vehicles which had the logo of the charity on their roofs. They should have been able to see that. And I think that, uh, unfortunately, Israel is now in a position where its allies have are really struggling to support it. Yeah, and that's the situation we're in. I mean, the Prime Minister said yesterday that Israel's actions are sort of increasingly in intolerable. What do you think the Prime Minister yes. should do? Well, I certainly don't think that uh, our ending our, our uh, defence equipment support for uh, Israel would make the slightest bit of difference. Our exports are about £50 million a year. Uh, the United States are exporting three billion pounds worth of equipment, so it, it's just uh, uh, virtue signaling. Uh, that is not the point. I think the point is to try to persuade the Israeli people that uh, this pursuit of the objective of eliminating Hamas is unsustainable. It is it is unachievable, uh, and is up, I fear it is up to the Israeli people um, to find some leaders who are capable of uh, entering into some kind of negotiation to re release their hostages. Yeah. But I think that uh, it is important for us to recognize uh, that if Hamas win, and I'm not quite sure what constitutes winning, but if Hamas win here, this will strengthen Iran's other uh, proxies like uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon. And you will have seen pictures on the television of uh, whole areas of border areas in northern Israel now deserted because of the threat from Hezbollah uh, on behalf of Iran in Lebanon and the Houthis disrupting world uh, trade traffic in the uh, in, in the Red Sea. So it, it is a very difficult uh, situation for our Western leaders to deal with. Uh, Sir Gerald, you said there that in order, well, by ceasing arms sales to Israel, it would be tantamount to merely virtue signaling. But the UK has done that before. In previous cases, was, was that simply virtue signaling? I'm trying to remember when we did that. And we do have an amazingly complex system of uh, export licenses for military equipment. I was uh, responsible for defence exports myself, but it was not decided in the Ministry of Defence. I understand, it but do you, not, would, do you not find it deplorable that there's a potential that UK manufactured weapons not only are being used against innocent Palestinians, but in this specific case, potentially could have been used to kill three innocent British people? Well, I'm afraid this is a war and uh, and civilians do get killed in in wartime. 32,000? Um, 
That is a fact. Don't forget who started this. This was started by Hamas on behalf of Iran. Why was it started? It was started because progress was being made in thawing relations between Israel and the rest of the Arab world. And this this represented a threat to Iran, who want to drive Israel into the Mediterranean Ocean. These are not simple things. And uh, uh, where I disagree with what is happening in Israel, I disagree uh, with their, their policy. I think it is fundamentally flawed, as I have suggested, that the elimination of Hamas is not achievable. And secondly, targeting, I have chaired my I serve a, a targeting board. I know how carefully we go about uh, selecting and approving targets. And it seems to me that the targeting of that aid convoy uh, was not just mistaken, um, but it has the hallmarks, I'm afraid, of being uh, deliberate. And uh, it is incumbent upon Netanyahu and his government not just to explain what happened, nothing will bring back the lives of those three British veterans and those others who were killed in that attack, but to ensure that it, no, it does not happen again. Mm. Um, I mean, Netanyahu I said to... as much as that. He said this was a mistake, we're going to make sure it, it doesn't happen again. But, you know, in your own words, Sir Gerald, earlier, you said this, this is war. I mean, it's impossible, surely, now to say nothing like that will happen again uh, for the duration of this conflict. Well, as I've explained, the the modus operandi of targeting is such that uh, certainly when we undertake it, as we did in Afghanistan and Iraq and in Libya, which in which I was involved, uh, we go to incredible lengths. And if there is a, sm a smidgen of doubt, we do not fire. Mm. Uh, the Americans have a different policy. The Americans are, uh, in my view, are rather more trigger happy, uh, and it seems to me that uh, Israel has uh, made a, a very, very, it's not just a mistake. This was this was completely avoidable. Whether it will uh, result in a change in the tactics of the Israeli Defense Forces, so uh, wonder, neither you think, nor I know. Why do you know. think it happened? Was it being more trigger happy, like you're suggesting the US would have done? Was it more calculated? What's your kind of best theory then? Well, it has been suggested that uh, perhaps those who were involved in the targeting had taken the view that uh, on the off chance that there was a Hamas uh, terrorist on board one of those vehicles, they were justified in taking out the other people. Uh, obviously, I don't know. I wasn't sitting there in the, uh, in, the, in, in the operations room where the targeting was carried out. Um, but that seems to me to be a possible explanation as to what happened and Others like Sir Alex Younger, the former head of MI6, I think, takes a similar view. Sir so Gerald, what do you make of the latest polling on this issue? British voters support a ban on arms sales to Israel. A majority of UK voters are in favour of that ban, only 17% against. It really does feel like the British public's opinion is changing. Yes, I suspect the opinion of the British public is changing because I think overwhelmingly British people have been supportive of, of Israel. Obviously, we've seen grotesque uh, anti-Semitic activity, and of course, the Labour Party has been riven with anti-Semitism in in recent years. Uh, but the overwhelming majority of the British people, I think, are supportive of the uh, of the state of Israel, particularly in the light of what happened in the Second World War. Uh, so uh, that is the the baseline. However, of course, the, the endless pictures on the television of uh, this. Uh, this widespread bombing, which, as I say, does not have the hallmarks uh, to me of, of uh, precision, uh, precision attacks, uh, I think has probably turned the attitude of the British people. But as I say, I, I think our oh, ceasing uh, to export military equipment, we import much more military equipment from Israel than we send to them. I think our oh, withholding that, um, I think, would be uh, would be completely pointless. But but also, I think it would send the wrong message. It would send a message that somehow we're on the side of Hamas. Let us remember that the, what the Israelis are doing is they are trying to recover their hostages, ordinary civilians going about their everyday lives like you and I are doing and hoping to do today, uh, taken, raped, mutilated, murdered, uh, 
and, and taken captive um, by these disgusting animals uh, in Hamas. And they are still there. And we have run out of time, unfortunately. Um, but thank you so much for joining us this morning. Afraid we've run out of time there. Uh, former Defence Minister Sir Gerald Howarth.